I'm gonna show you how I made this maze and how you can turn any black and white maze image into a 3D printable model. Let's get started. Before we really get started, I made two more mazes at the end. Links to all models will be in the description. Okay, so open up Blender, click Shift A and go to Images, Reference. Choose the maze you want to make and import it. When you import a reference image, it will automatically face the camera. So to fix this, make sure you've got the image selected and with it selected, click Alt R to reset the image's rotation. Then go into Top Orthographic View by clicking on 7 on your keyboard number pad or if your keyboard doesn't have a number pad, just go into View, Viewpoint and click Top. Now import a plane as the starting point of the maze by clicking Shift A, then going to Mesh and clicking Plane. Now I can't see the mesh since the image is in front of it. You can fix this by clicking on the image, going to the image icon in the properties tab and changing the opacity. You should also change the depth to front and of course for the transparency to, to work, you need to check alpha. I also turned off selection on the image since I kept accidentally selecting it. Now I'm going to start modeling by moving the plane to the corner with G and going into edit mode by clicking tab. Then you can select any of the vertices by clicking on them or select multiple at the same time by holding shift. I select the two right vertices and move them again with G to line up with the border of the black line on the image. If you want to only move something up or down, just click Y after clicking G or X to only move it left and right. Then I do the same for the bottom two and we've got one line. Now to do the bottom border, add a loop cut by clicking Ctrl R, move your mouse next to the face where you want to add the loop cut, then click to confirm and move your mouse to move it along the selected face. I'm going to move it to the top of the bottom line. Then select the two bottom right vertices and click E to extrude. And since we want it to move right, not up or down, just click X to tell it you only want it to move along the x-axis. Now I'm going to keep using these basic commands to create the entire maze. It's mostly done, but it's still 2D. So go into your scene tab in properties and change length to whatever real life units you use. Then add a sphere with shift A mesh sphere and change the size to your ball's real world size in the transform tab. If you can't see the sidebar, just click N and it will appear. Scale the maze to fit the ball. My maze was way, way too big, but that really doesn't matter. Now that it fits, add another plane with Shift A Mesh Plane and scale it down to be ever so slightly larger than the maze. Go into edit mode, that's tab, click A to select all the vertices and click E then Z to extrude the plane down. Make sure the maze is aligned with the base, then do the same for the maze. Go into edit mode, click A then E and Z to extrude it down. Make sure to extrude it until it's inside the base, but make sure it doesn't come out the other side. If you're not sure about the height of the walls, just go into front view by pressing 1, or once again if you don't have a number pad, just go to view, viewpoint, and then click on front. Once you're into front view, click on Z, and select wireframe. Now you can see the wall and the walls to make sure it's high enough. Now the last step is to combine the two parts, the base and the walls. Blender has a super handy tool to easily properly merge two intersecting meshes. Select the base, open the modifiers tab, click add new modifier and select boolean. 
there's two things to change here. First, change difference to union, then use the eyedropper tool to select the maze walls. Now just click on apply. Now you still have two outlets, the finished maze and a copy of the wall. So select the old wall and delete it. Now just export the maze if you want to and you can move on to Cura. I wasn't really happy with how much space the walls were taking in, so before I export it I'm quickly going to change that. Perfect, as you can see when I import the old maze and compare it to the new one, the new one is much smaller even though the space for the ball is just as big. So for the settings I always set infill to 20% unless of course I specifically need something strong and then you can set the detail to 0.1. Less detailed the lines get too visible and more detailed it takes about double as long while you really don't need that much detail. But that's just my preferences. Also if you have problems with adhesion, turn on adhesion. Here it is, as Cura calculated it, it took about 8 hours of printing, but luckily I didn't have any problems. Now if I take a small ball, preferably metal so it has more weight and rolls easily, I can put it in one side of the maze and tilt it to guide it all the way through the maze. I did this a few times before so I'm pretty quick at it. If you're wondering where I got these balls, I took them out of the ball bearing from an old broken bike we had lying around. Unfortunately these are quite big, but since all the stores are closed I had to use these. Of course if you have a smaller ball, you could easily make the whole maze smaller. You can easily make this a bit better by finishing it off with a transparent cover. So start by staking some epoxy and mixing it up. Now use something to spread it as thinly as possible over the top of the maze. Something I noticed afterwards was that you really don't need much epoxy. If you use too much it can even spill into the maze's paths and ruin the entire maze. Once you think there's enough epoxy on the maze, take a piece of transparent plastic, I got this from some old packaging, and put the maze upside down on the plastic. You can also place a heavy book or something on it if you really want to make sure they're pressed together. Now the very last step is to just use a precision knife and cut the plastic. And it's done. I hope you liked the video. If you did, like and consider subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. And as I said in the beginning, links to download this and the two other mazes I made will be in the description. Also, if you want to see how I made the two other mazes and how I make more real weirdly shaped mazes, just keep watching.